Hey there my friends and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be exploring watercolour techniques, um, preferably wet on wet today. So the paper I'm using is Arches Aquarelle Cold Press. I have stretched this piece and then stapled it down around the edges. Applied some acid free washi tape so we've, not, so we've got nice clean edges at the end of the painting. It's £140 in weight and this measures 9 inches by 12 inches. I'm just applying, well I've sketched the robin out, this is a, from a photograph I took in my garden um, last summer, so sketch that out with an HB uh, mechanical pencil very lightly and now I'm just applying some water where I want to apply a wet in wet technique for the background. So I'm, I don't want all the background covered on this piece. I'd already done a little thumbnail sketch and I just wanted the background, a uh, little bit of colour just behind the bird's head. So I've wet the paper with clear water and it's deionized water that you can buy from different supermarkets. It's for what you use in battery car batteries and things so it's got all the impurities taken out of it so it won't affect the light fastness of your uh, materials that you're working with so I've applied the um, water and now I'm just dropping in some blue watercolour paint watered down I'm using Winsor & Newton uh, half pans these are the Cotman ones so the light fastness is pretty good on them so I'm um, using those today and what I'm doing is I'm dropping the pigment into the area I've already wetted but I'm not letting it spread out to where there's any dry areas of paper because that will cause hard edges. So now just adding a little bit of violet, the colours don't matter. If you want to do this kind of background on one of your paintings then um, just have a play. I like to keep a spare piece of paper next to the board where I can try all my different colours and remember when working with watercolours they do dry quite a bit lighter than when you first apply them so it's nice to maybe make a little swatch card of your different colours and keep that at hand just so you know um, how much they actually lighten through the process of drying so here I'm just adding a little bit more of the violet and then back in with the blue and I think the, the, the beauty of watercolour is, is you never really know how it's going to dry exactly, especially when you're working wet into wet, which is this, when you're applying a wet medium to a paper that's already been wetted. Now, you can dry this off with a hairdryer to speed up the process a little bit, and then you can work water onto, onto the top of that and apply more pigment if you want to go um, with a richer pigment, with a deeper pigment or a darker pigment. Um, if you're working with quality paper and with quality paints, you can lift pigment, but don't rely on it because some pigments stain the paper so you can't always lift them off. And nine times out of ten you can't actually get back right back to the white of the paper so just bear that in mind now what i'm adding is while the paper is still damp with the pigment i'm dropping little droplets of clear water into the paint itself now this is a process where you create blooms some people refer to them as cauliflowers because they look like little cauliflowers but um, a lot of the time they're referred to as watercolour blooms and what it is a bloom just disperses out into the surrounding area pushing pigments out of the way as it goes so you can do blooms with different coloured paints or you can do blooms as I did just with water um, and again it's nice just to have a piece of paper to one side and just practice these things before you go in onto a main painting you might be working on. So try these things, put different washes underneath, different colours underneath and see what happens, see what the results are like when you drop uh, clear water or different colour pigment on top. So I'd let the background settle and do its own thing and I was happy with the results. I dried it off completely with a hairdryer and then I applied just water uh, to begin with to the face area and neck area or throat area of the robin. Then I started to, to apply um, oranges, yellows and reds 
as I said, the colours are immaterial. You know, you don't need to know the names and everything like that. Just if you want to paint a robin, get a nice reference image to go by and then just have a play around with the colours. Because what you like or what you may like, another person may not like and vice versa. So it's um, personalising your paintings. Um, that's why I don't supply reference images. I mean, these are mine, they're copyrighted to me because I sell my work. But there's a couple of sites um, on the internet that I do refer people to, and that's pixabay.com and unsplash.com. And they have a wealth of photographs, a plethora of photographs um, that you can use in your projects. I like to teach people techniques, and then I like to see the, the people and um, progress with their own styles and if you're copying somebody you know line for line color for color you're going to end up with more of that person's style than your own so just keep that in mind too so as i said i first wet this area of the bird with water and while it was still damp i applied the initial coat of paint dropping it in wet into wet there's different techniques that you can use in watercolor and this is just one of them wet into wet also when i was doing the background um, because the paint didn't actually meet any of the dry paper that is actually known as a lost edge on here on this part of the bird because i only wetted the paper up to a certain point say the beak or the shoulder area as the paint moved towards the dry area that is called a found edge so within if you hear anybody talking about watercolor painting and they talk about lost edges and found edges that's all it is really a lost edge is um, an area where the paint has blended out into clear water before meeting dry paper and a found edge is where the paint has moved across the paper and met a dry area of the painting uh, paper sorry forming a hard edge and that's that's all it is really lost and found edges also if you keep watching here i've already wet the paint this area of the paper i've put the brown in now i'm dropping some violet in when you drop more paint into an area that's already got paint on it as well as letting the two colours mingle and do their own thing, which is lovely, you're also charging that area. So you're adding more paint to an area that's already got paint in it, and that's called charging. That's another terminology you might come across um, when watching people's watercolour tutorials or reading books and things. But the thing is, you can watch as many videos as you want, you can read the books, but until you start painting <coughs> excuse me, yourself, these things won't have as much meaning. So get your paints out, have a go, then watch some videos and you'll find things really do start clicking into place. The more you do, the more you practice, the more you have fun with a medium, the quicker you'll learn and the sooner other explanations will start making sense. So I added some violet to the back of the head and um, across the back of the neck put a few drops of water into the shoulder area to while the paper was still damp to cause a few more blooms to occur and these are really random so just be aware that when you're adding blooms you, you only have a little bit of control about how it's going to look if you don't like the look of it then dry it off with a hair dryer or a heat tool it doesn't take long because it's watercolor and then you can do the process again on top but the thing is your next layer will be slightly darker with watercolor you, you're always going to be go, going darker because it's translucent you can't really go lighter in, unless you start bringing in materials such as gouache which is an opaque watercolor um, I'm just sketching out now um, a drawing that I'm going to be doing in gouache for you really soon so I'll take you through the details of that in another video so just applying a little bit of lilac base coat to the beak and a little bit of lilac base coat to the eye. And what we're doing is by using lilac in the bird itself, we put the, obviously the lilac wasn't in the reference photo, but I'm pulling in the colours from the background into the subject, gelling the two together. So 
it forms a complete painting as opposed to a painted bird that's you know been cut out and stuck onto the background so try and marry the colors together within a, a painting if you're going to use um, a colour in one part of the painting, try and bring it into other parts of the painting too. Um, obviously cool colours, blues and lilacs, things like that, are cool colours and they're going to push areas further away from the viewer. Uh, whereas warmer colours, reds, oranges and yellows, they're nice to put in a foreground because they actually look as though they're nearer to the viewer. So cool colours look make things look further away, warm colours make things look closer to the viewer. Obviously the bird, um, with it being a robin, does have the yellows and oranges and reds in its chest and face area. Uh, so really there's no getting around that, that they have got to be there unless it was going to be a very, very stylized uh, robin. So we're just doing the wet on wet again I just wet the area very very slightly on the bird's face and throat dropped in a few more drops of paint then with a damp brush soften the edges just so we don't get any hard edges where we don't want them you don't have to work really really quick with watercolor because as long as you're working in very thin layers with um, unstaining pigments um, you can look on pigment information to see which colours are more staining than others. And as long as you stay clear of the colours that really do stain your paper, it's and you're working with a good quality uh, paper too, it's very easy to um, lift certain colours. So try working with colours to begin with if you haven't worked with watercolours before, where they can be easily lifted. Keep in mind if a colour can be easily lifted, then it's not a, an, a good idea to keep working over it. If you're happy with a layer, then leave it alone because if you keep working over it with other layers, you're likely to lift the layer underneath. Okay, so the, th the same thing was um, done with the wing, just a base coat was popped on. I didn't pre-wet this area because it's a small area and I knew really what I wanted to do. A little bit of water add in there just to um, make sure we don't get any hard edges and then just adding some more colours browns I used the brown from the back and mixed a little bit of the violet in with it so again we're keeping all of the colours uh, very controlled we're using uh, on this painting quite a, a small amount of colours so the thing is if you buy a whole packet or a whole box of watercolours for a beginner it's very tempting well, one, they won't know which colours to use, and two, they might use too many colours. But if you keep a limited palette, it often works in a painting much better, say using five to seven colours instead of 15. It makes the choice easier, it makes mixing easier, and mixing single pigments as well. So use colours where there's only one or two pigments used in the making of that colour. They're the ones that are going to be easy to mix with each other and you won't end up with you know murky browns and <laughs> dreary greys but we'll talk about colour mixing in another video we'll keep this one simple so I believe I used five colours in this one painting and from five colours you get a whole variety because there's so many mixes you can achieve by using just five colours now then, I'm just looking down my list now. The brush I'm using is my old Faithful. Uh, it's a Series 344, number 6 by Rosemary & Co. I'm sure if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll hear me raving about this brush. And it's my all-time favourite. And I use it for nearly all of my water mediums. Um, we've spoken about the blooms and cauliflowers that we used in the background and on the shoulder of the bird. Uh, we've spoken about lost edges and found edges when painting with watercolour and I've spoken briefly about charging when one colour enters another colour. Just having a look down my list and as I said with watercolour it can be a hard medium because a lot of it you don't know what it's going to look like until it's dry. But the more you play around with this medium, 
the more experience you get and I don't paint with watercolour every day so I'm by no means you know I don't know everything but I do enjoy it it was the first medium that I worked with as a child so um so I do, I do love it and I love the, the vibrancy, especially when you let the white of the paper show through. So the log effect was just done the same as the sky. I wet um, the log area with a two inch flat brush and then just dropped some colours in, the browns from the colouring in the wings, uh, the violet from the colour of the sky and it just pulled it all together and a little bit of orange um, to mirror the colouring in the bird and there you have him a quick little watercolour sketch of a robin taken from a photograph in my own garden so grab yourself a reference image off unsplash or pixabay.com and have a go yourself I'd love to know what you think of this one if you want to leave a comment down below that would be great if you haven't liked it and you've enjoyed this video please hit like and subscribe um, at the moment I'm releasing a video a week thank you to all my subscribers so far love you all your comments are so encouraging and that's it for today for this week I'll see you all next week take care stay safe and stay creative bye for now bye